Well, we should know uh, after the, after a couple of days, I think, whether or not uh, anything at all is Will you be digging indicative. Today? I imagine they'll check out a couple of them that are loaded on the uh, aerial photographs, yes. Do you think Monday you'll have an idea whether the search is over? Very possible, yes. The search is over itself, uh, other than the uh, checking of the infrared fo photographs. If there were indeed a list with dates and victims' names, that would be furnished to your office, would it not? Well, I'm very sure it would have been by the uh, a sheriff corner up there. Did you get such a list? No, we did not get any list at all. What are you doing today, Sheriff? Please, one at a time. I what are, you using a map, what are we using a map? No. Or are you using a diagram prepared by your department for positive or probable uh, identification of burial sites? No. Hey, tell us roughly you how you. Well, your information is usually pretty accurate, isn't it? You wouldn't put it into an affidavit unless you was. <laughs> Again, I'm under the restraints of a court order. Uh, sure. Have you found any slaughterhouses uh, or suspected slaughterhouses? Oh, I think that's kind of a well, bad term to use. Well, we've been putting in all of us uh, about 16 hours a day, and uh, naturally that affects anyone's family. Uh, my family's holding up very well under it, although uh, I think for about a four-day period there I hadn't seen my children. Have you had time to at least get home once in a while and see your wife and children? Yes, I have. Are they appreciative of that fact? Oh, I, I hope so. <laughs> right now, at the present time, he's being held as a material witness. Uh, was it indeed for his own protection? That was considered also. You've made comments today that you hope or it appears that you've exhausted the possibility of finding more bodies. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, I certainly hope we've exhausted uh, any possibility of finding more bodies. However, uh, in my statement this morning, I had, had made, uh, uh, we've exhausted the uh, location of obvious graves that have been out there. Does that mean now that the investigation or search will become more difficult for you? I believe so, yes. I will announce at this time that there have been 20 bodies recovered. We do expect to recover more to this morning. We're currently digging in about approximately the same area that we've dug in within the last few days. I have a partial list of some descriptions of the victims that we've located thus far. Is there no way that, that drifters of this sort can be protected? Well, we offer as much protection to all uh, people of the community as we can possibly give them. It appeared to have been buried some time. Mm -hmm. Again, the same identifying wounds as those previously found. Um, I don't know much about it yet, as I haven't viewed the body itself. Uh, this person also white, the 14th body? I don't have any idea. I've lived here two years, and in that time, maybe we've exchanged uh, late hours. Uh, I would say yes, because sometimes I wait for a ride at work, and at night, at around 10:30. Yes. And I have seen him come, and I have even seen him leave a few times. Would you have any indication at this time from grave sites that you're trying to inspect and find that there are more bodies in this area? I don't really know uh, how many more we're going to find or uh, if we're going to find any more. I have no idea. Through the findings of uh, ranchers and uh, laborers in the area, we learned of the first two. In the graves? Yes. They discovered the indentations in the earth and then uh, uh, we later dug up the graves. What made them suspicious of these indentations? Isn't there a lot of digging going on here? Yes, they're doing a lot of disking right now, and uh, the second uh, body that was discovered was uh, discovered by one of the f workers disking in the field uh, in the orchard, and uh, he had observed an indentation in the ground, and from that and recalling the uh, uh, news reports of the previous body that had been found, he called the sheriff's department.
I just thought it was an error. I just thought he meant there was one body because I knew there was one body found last week and I just couldn't imagine anything like that happening in this area. Well, I don't know. I don't like it. I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, it's something that you just don't, uh, don't ever expect to happen around, you know. That I just can't understand why anybody would want to do such a terrible thing. Well, I told my wife, he, it seemed like he was a little bit, uh, he didn't stand still and he seemed like he was a little uh, jit, a little nervous to me. He, pe he appeared to be. Did you me. say that to your wife that day or after you heard what he's accused of? No, I didn't, uh, I didn't tell her then. I didn't think too much of it right at the time. But after, uh, afterwards, I, uh, you know, after all this came out, and then it, I remembered it, that he seemed kind of nervous and he even uh, kind of uh, stuttered a little. Well, as I said before, approximately. Because all the evidence could not be presented in court today, the hearings on a motion for bail and a change of venue will be postponed until a week from Friday, when the prosecution will present its arguments and evidence. Any decision will be delayed for some time. In the meantime, Juan Corona will be returned to Sutter County General Hospital, where he has been under doctor's care and sheriff's surveillance. Maria Nicholas, KCRA News, Yuba City. The reason I made the bail motion is because I'm concerned about Juan's health. Why? Uh, because I think that uh, a long period of incarceration is going to kill him. I think there's a very good chance that he'll die. Have you seen him lately? Yes, I saw him yesterday. What's the state of his health now? Better or worse? Well, it's better than it was when he was in the county jail, but uh, Juan is. Uh, <clears throat> Juan uh, doesn't look good. He's. Uh, didn't look good yesterday. He's just getting tired. He's getting worn out, uh, and he's losing a little heart. Uh, he, uh, I have medical evidence that uh, continued incarceration, whether it's uh, in the state prison or whether it's in county jail, is uh, bad for him medically. I think that con keeping him incarcerated uh, is uh, increasing the risk that the man's going to die of a heart attack. Earlier this week, Juan Corona granted the first public interview since his arrest. It received state and national coverage. But as a result of this court order, gag rule, issued today, he can no longer make statements outside the court that would prejudice his case in any way. The defense and prosecuting attorneys are also prohibited from issuing any information that would jeopardize a fair trial once the Corona case does go to court. Maria Nicholas, KCRA News, Yuba City. A week ago today, a peach farmer came to this orchard and found a hole here the size and shape of a grave. He called police the following day when he found the hole covered over. Deputies found the body here of a mutilated farm worker. They examined the scene for clues, covered the grave over, and left. Yesterday, they began to find more bodies. Out here. You found a whole pile of shovels near the graves. As one of approximately 15 farm labor contractors who operate in this area during the peak harvest season, Juan Corona frequently came here to the state farm labor office to hire his employees.
on how you hope you have, exer have uh, exhausted uh, areas of searching for bodies. There was evidence of the holiday in Yuba City today. The streets in this small farming community of 15,000 were lined with flags, the traditional symbol honoring men who have died during this country's wars. There is also a lot of thought here about the transient workers who died a grisly death. But why they were murdered is still the biggest mystery of all. And if Sheriff Whitaker is right in his speculation, and there are no more graves to be uncovered, attention will now turn to the day when suspect Juan Corona appears in court, and the possible answers to this mystery begin to unfold. Vic Biondi, KCRA News, Yuba City. I've uh, conducted voir dire examinations of uh, jurors in 170 or 175 jury trials, and um, I think the people of this county make very fair jurors. Well, uh, to file a motion for discovery, which was filed Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, in this motion, of course, we're asking for the names of their witnesses the items that they have for evidence, um, any expert testimony that they may use, and, a, and um, written tape, notes, notes of police officers. Uh, um, that's about the extent of it. With only one assistant in the public defender's office, do you actually feel you're going to be with this case all the way? As of now, yes. yes. You could take that kind of time. I'm going to take that kind of time. Let's put it that way. That's my job.
The search for additional victims, at least as far as this area is concerned, is about over, unless a series of U.S. Navy jet photos sheds new light on the case. But sources close to this case will tell you there are more bodies out here somewhere, but they will never be found. The Feather River has risen and fallen. Ranchers have disturbed the soil, thus erasing the last telltale signs of evidence. Mike Boyd, KCRA News, on the Sullivan Ranch near Yuba City. You said you that you believe that the wrong man has been taken into custody. Uh, I, do you still believe that? Yes, I do. Absolutely. I believe that Juan's innocent. Uh, uh, I don't have any comment about uh, who it is at this point, but it, it's not Juan. What makes you so sure, though? Uh, from uh, the discussion with the family, with Juan, and uh, from uh, what I know of uh, the investigation. You mean you've studied the investigation, yeah. and from your reading of it, you're that's, sure he's innocent? That's my opinion. I think the trial is short. Is there, you know, there's been a lot of comment that Juan Corona went to DeWitt Hospital in 1956, schizophrenic, et cetera. Uh, very unfortunate because it wouldn't be admissible at trial at all, and I don't know how it leaked out to the press and, uh, or whether they found it on their own, but uh, it's not an admissible issue in a trial if the only plea is not guilty, and uh, I think it's real unfortunate because you're going to have a difficult time finding 12 people that haven't read about it, and... Uh, and have not read uh, the references I saw some of the LA papers, and they refer to him as a mental patient in the in headlines. The image that you get of him is that he's uh, a wild, uh, machete wheeling uh, sort of guy. And this is not true at all. This is 15 years ago. He had an emotional problem, and uh, that was the end of it. The arraignment was held here instead of in a Sutter County court because of doctors' concern over the strain of the proceedings on corona. The 37-year-old defendant had suffered a near heart attack after his arrest, and doctors reportedly wanted him near complete medical aid in the event that he had a relapse of any sort. However, the 17-minute arraignment went without a hitch. Corona waived the reading of the charges against him, and the proceedings were continued until Thursday, pending completion of the grand jury transcript. Afterward, Corona's attorney reiterated his confidence in his ability to prove the innocence of his client. Uh, I, and I don't mean this in, a, uh, in any boastful sense, but it still is the, uh, in terms of the evidence that, that uh, they have, which is, in my opinion, rather feeble, pitiful, with circumstantial evidence, they could have built a similar case against a lot of other people if they chose to. Uh, it'll, in terms of the evidence, it'll be the easiest case I ever tried. Oh, I just think it was in Juan's best interest. Uh, there was some indication that there was uh, uh, a meeting held uh, at uh, the sheriff's office last Friday. We were in the building, and I don't know who all was there uh, besides the, say the sheriff and the judge and uh, the district attorney, and I don't know what it was about. Uh, it may have been about other things, but just that and uh, uh, discussions with Juan and uh, felt that it was really in his best interest if. Uh, uh, we moved to disqualify the judge and uh, ask that a new judge be assigned. Do you feel Judge Hankins' previous order concerning a blackout about Mr. Corona's condition was fair? Juan, the, the only 
thing that I know of uh, was that, of course, the law prohibits uh, Dr. Leavenworth from discussing uh, Juan's condition with anyone unless Juan consents. The same, it's a physician-patient privilege. Uh, other than that, I, I don't know what effect it really has. It's not a discussion of the case, and I don't think, uh, I don't particularly care. Juan looks all right, says he feels good, and I, my understanding from uh, the doctor is that uh, it's a, just a matter of hypertension. He's under a lot of strain. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think there's any death list. I haven't seen death list. Uh, I understand uh, that there's uh, that Juan uh, had a list of uh, people that had worked for him over a uh, period of time, and that the names of uh, three or he had three or four or two or three or whatever it is. This is the problem. See, we don't have all these things. That uh, some of these uh, uh, people who were uh, uh, found in the Sullivan Ranch and other places, two or three of these people appeared on his list, but. Uh, there's uh, nothing extraordinary about that. He's a labor contractor, and I'm sure if you looked in uh, uh, other labor contractors' books, you'd find uh, a lot of these uh, names appearing also, different names in different books, because these, apparently these guys work uh, a day or so and then come back downtown. You know. <laughs> Gentlemen, get ready. We can probably spread out a little bit more if we're easier. Can you stand uh, out in the sun? It's all right. No, I know. No, not all right. Donnie, can you go down? Right. Everybody rolling? Everybody rolling? Okay, let's go. Mr. Hawkins. It was from recommendations to people that I wrote. Could you explain the motions you made this morning? Uh, well, I. The last motion I made was for a list of uh, all the witnesses the district attorney intends to call, or knows he's going to call at this time, uh, at the preliminary hearing. Uh, we made a motion for uh, copies of all the photographs that they have. There's a great number of them. It's difficult to read these reports uh, without having copies of the photographs, because uh, we didn't have the opportunity to be there at the time of the investigation. Uh, Ray Neal. Sheriff. 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 This is certainly the biggest uh, crime in this county. We're certain that he thrown his house. I understand someone's brought in. I have no. Be killed, and no one ever contact you in this area. How could nine people be missing for a period of time like this? Probably uh, some of the cause would be uh, due to the fact that they are transient type. Uh, other than that, uh, I really don't know. Very peculiar. No one ever missed any of these people whose bodies you found here? Uh, one of them had been reported missing in Marysville. Well, these men do move up and down the state and go to Oregon and Washington and and this treacherous stereotypes. They're viewed as, uh, uh, well, let's see, Freddie the Freeloader, you know, Red Skelton's Freddie the Freeloader, who's happy go lucky he chooses to live that way. Uh, and uh, they also view him as the wino, who, you know, uh, who is an alcoholic, and alcoholism is a very personal problem that has to be resolved within the person. Um, it's not true. You know, they're working men.
We have tardily met to honor are faceless and nameless to most of us, yet many of them have contributed to the economy of this community, to its wealth, to their labors in our fields and on our orchards. Wouldn't it be well if we showed a little more interest and a little more concern in them while they live among us and work among us? They haven't really been up yeah. here, wow. nor can I include the... Uh they started it, and I think it's unfair. Uh, uh, for them to have uh, a week or two or three weeks to make these kind of statements and create the impression that they've obviously cr created, even on newsmen that I talked to. Uh, and then later on when an attorney comes in and gets in a position where he's, he's got his feet on the ground enough in the case that he can say something, to say, well, nobody can say anything anymore. No, sir. That's not true. That's not true. Why well, do you feel that way? Well, I feel uh, bad because I I've been having a lot of, lot of problems since the, the, the arrest at night, you know. I've been very close. I lose everything in my family and all, you know. I never had been in jail before, you know. Why do you, know? you think they picked on you? Why do you think you were arrested? Why? Well, I don't know, sir. I don't know. Does that bother you, that they would think you did that? Well, it even bothered me too much because, see, my family and my kids and all that, they had to, to leave from home and, and I had time and put it bad. Yes, very quiet. Polite. Very polite. Uh, very strict with his children. Uh, his children were very nice kids. Uh, Your kids play with theirs? No, the kids usually climbed up in something at the fence and tried to play with my kids and talk to my children. My children, of course, are smaller. And then pretty soon they disappeared.
spoken to the press like Pardon? this. Is this the first time Mrs. Corona has spoken in a, uh, in in a, a pre press? Mr. Hawk's comment is uh, is completely unfounded and, and, and completely prejudicial. It's so, so uncalled for, I, I really haven't got words to describe it. What I said was the truth, and I stand on it. He told you that he's not sure that Mr. Corona is the man? That's what I said in court, that he expressed it, that it's in the record, and I stand on what I said. I told the truth. Because he said that he didn't know what Mrs. Underwood was going to say. <laughs> that, what do you want to do, alter it? That, he says, in spite of the fact that two of his attorneys spent a couple of hours with Mrs. Underwood doing what they could to get her to change her story about the jury tampering. <laughs> The prosecution, and by that I include the sheriff's office, any time... You to shave next. And then day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. So you shaved yesterday. The day before. No, it was yesterday. Right. I think yesterday, the day before. The wrong guy? Day by day. What are you doing? Well, I do little reading, you know, praying a little bit, and that's all. Not much can do besides that. So, you get to talk to anyone? No, there's nobody around there. You get to talk over there. It's by myself over there. That's, that's all. You, uh, you said something about, uh, we know you said you wanted to work, you wanted to do something yes, while right. you were here. That's well, right. Like what? What would you like to do? Well, I can, uh, I like to do something so it can keep me busy, you know, and keep thinking about uh, things, you know. Anything to be able to do, I'd be very glad, you know. Like, have you seen men doing things that you would like to do? What have you seen them do that you would like well, to do? See, this, I have a friend here that he, he goes around taking food to the people, you know, and uh, he walks around here mm -hmm. to, the, to the people. And, uh, I wish they can put me to do this, this kind of mm -hmm. uh, work, you know, or, or sweep or something, see. And, uh, I like to see if I can walk to the, the place, you know, you say he's your friend. You have a friend here, someone that you've yeah, I, become acquainted with? Well, one man I know a long time, you know, mm -hmm. and I've seen him two, three times. How do you know? You mean you knew him before you came here, Juan? Yes, I knew him before he went to the service. Before he went to the service. Yes. And he's, is he an officer here, or is he in... No, he's, he's in jail. He's in jail. Well, is that Thompson? No, it's Mr. Mr. Reynosa, oh, Ralph right. Reynosa. And uh, before he went to service, I met him, and, and uh, well, I he goes, he, he walks everything here, the, the, mm -hmm. the gym, you know, and he 
he works in, uh, I wish they can give me the, the job, you know, to do something and, yeah. and take some. See, uh, I think he, he gets 25 days in one month, or he gets five days off in one month. You mean he gets to go outside then? I, I don't or know. Or I mean, good time one? Uh -huh. Good time. Yes. You're talking if he works, then he earns five days every month. Yes. So that's if he right. has 30 five days, days yeah. good time, yes. he does 25. Yes. You, you, do you get to talk to him some? What do you talk about? Well, not too much except when, just when he comes to the to my uh, place and give me the food. That's all. What do you do? Just say hello. And hello, and sometimes oh. I order, oh, cookies. You know, he he go and buy the cookies and bring it to me. Cigarettes. Or something. Juan, you've maintained ever since. The night that, or the day or night they came and got you, that you've been innocent. Yes. Uh, have you ever had any misgivings about uh, your insistence on your innocence, or uh, let's see, misgiving? You don't understand misgivings, do you? Did anyone read these papers to you? Well, and see, this was about this much a bunch of papers, and and he read a little bit. And he say, well, uh, it's going to take uh, all night and all morning to read that, so might as well <coughs> say, uh, better go. Yeah. Was what, from what you remember when they told you what was in the papers, well, that, is that true? Was uh, it true what was I, in the paper, what it said I, you did? I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't. Did you know what was in the papers, Juan? Well, no, I, I answer that. Did, did you know what was in the I didn't know what was in the paper, see. I, didn't, I, I mean, didn't when know. they told you, then someone told you what was in there. Well, this, this Mexican boy, say, they've been taking people out someplace, you know. He say, uh, you better get somebody, a lawyer or something, see. That's what he told me, see. And, uh, was that when, at your house? At or? my house, yes. Uh, when did, when did you first know what you were accused of? At your home or when you got to the jail? Well, and, and, and this, this in the night and then in the morning, they took him out of the jail and, and uh, there was the judge, the judge and a few more people. He say, he asked me if I was, if I know what they, 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 they they were there for, you know, something. Say, I don't know. And uh, then they took me back to. Oh, he asked me if I had a, an attorney. I had a, I say, no, I don't know. Says, you remember what they told you that you had done? I mean, they said that they thought you did this. Well, uh, or the charges, they mentioned charges against you. Is that correct? Yes, they, they say something about charges against you, something. Say. Did they say what kind of charges? No, no, sir. Not that night? No. Did they, when you appeared before the judge, did they? Yes. Then you, then that was the first time you knew what you were accused That's of. That's right. When you get out of jail, you think about being out of jail, I imagine. Sure. And Mr. Hawk said that I'm going to get out sometime to see. What do you plan to do? What do you want to do when this is over? Well, I, I, I got to go and work for my kids. See. Are you going to stay in this town? Well, all depends, you know. What does it depend know. on? What do you want to happen when you get out? Well, I want to see my, my brother came, you know, and then I, then I say I, I come with him, see. see I, long time ago. Mm -hmm. What did you think you would do when you got here? Why did you want to come to the United States? Well, I, I like, you know, I like very much. And and I uh, I thought I can live here, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I stay here long time. My father and my mother was not here. They were in Mexico, but uh, I like it, you know. I like this country very much. Do people always treat you well? Everybody says yes. Were you happy about your job and your friends? And yes, everything happened. Yeah, everything. What did, why were you happy? What was it like? Why, was it, why did it make you happy? 
Bueno, y pues sí, de fier. Es very, very nice country, sí. A lot of, lot of things they can do. A lot of, lot of ways to live, sí. Juan, yes. he worries more about me than he does himself. Is that right? You worry about him, huh? Uh -huh. He worries I work. He worries I didn't have a briefcase. He gave me a briefcase he brought from Mexico. He's a hell of a guy. You were showing the yes. man. Oh, just the one. You've never seen any pictures in the in the newspaper. No, sir. No, no, no sir. So you wouldn't have any way of knowing then, if no, he doesn't. No. He spent so much time in a small cell. But, uh, what do you hear? You listen to the radio, right, Juan? You listen yes, to the radio. Uh, read some newspapers once in a while. No. Look at some newspapers once in a while. No, no newspapers, no. Just the radio. And listen, this, this radio here. Yeah. So this, uh, do, do you ever remember hearing them talk about you on the radio, Juan? Yes, I heard that uh, almost last week. Mm -hmm. Last week, yes. What did they? What did you think? What did you hear when you heard them talk about you? Well, I heard about that uh, Mr. Hawk had to go to court for something, you know. And and I, I I never hear it before because I hear grand jury one. Is that what you're talking about? You yeah. asked me what a grand jury was. Yes. What did they say about you though, Juan? Do you remember? Well, or did you? I I I didn't see when was it? Last week I I listened to the radio in Sacramento. It's this radio, see. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about uh, about twenty five. People, you know, I, I against. I got too much nervous because I never, I never hear it before. See, mm -hmm. I, I was too much nervous. I told Mr. Hawk I was very nervous because I never hear that. Never see. First time I hear. See. How do you yeah. feel now? No, I, I feel fine. I feel, right feel, side, yeah. how do you feel I feel very yeah, good. Yeah, very fine. How's your, how's your chest feel? Okay. Feel all yeah. Right? I feel huh? very, very good. I find okay. fine. Yeah. It probably makes you feel better to talk about uh, the situation, huh? To tell people how it is. Yes, since I since you've been here. Yes, I talked last week. What did you say to them when they came? Well, I, I told my wife that she she thinks some way to get to leave, you know. She wants to go back to Mexico? No, mm -hmm. no, she she wants the kids. Live, I mean. Oh, live! I'm sorry, to, to live, live to yeah. get along. He says, and I in Spanish is eat, so he says leave. He means yes. some way to live to get along. What did you yeah. tell her? What did you talk about then? When you, when you were talking to her? Yes, but she didn't know what to do. See, she <laughs> they're, uh, they're running out of time. Let's see, the sheriff has to turn back. Let Let me get into one thing then. Juan, do you remember many years ago? When you were taken to the mental hospital, yes. Do you remember that? Do you remember why you were taken there? And what can you tell us about yes. that? Your, what you remember about that? Well, sir, I, I tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I didn't remember until I was so many days up, up there. See, there and were so many what? I was already maybe maybe half a month or one month when I remember. See, before that, I don't remember nothing. See. And, uh, I Before know. you got to the hospital, you don't remember. Nothing, sir. nothing, sir. They, they treat me re really nice over there too. See, they, they give medicines and leave over there very good. See, it's good therapy, huh? but before, yeah. before I didn't remember nothing, sir. You remember nothing before no. you got to the mental hospital. Juan, thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Very kind.
Juan Corona says he is worried about how long he might have to stay in jail. Corona has told his attorney he wants to go to trial quickly and get it over with. Corona also says he feels the trial will give him the chance. Let it roll. Juan Corona says he is worried about how long he might have to stay in jail. Corona has told his attorney he wants to go to trial quickly and get it over with. Corona also says he feels the trial will give him the chance to prove he is innocent. Vic Biondi, KNBC News, Marysville. Okay, I gotta say, uh... Really? Juan Corona... Juan Corona says he is worried about how long he might have to stay in jail. Corona has told his attorney he wants to go to trial quickly and get it over with. Corona feels the trial will give him the chance to prove he is innocent. Vic Biondi, KNBC News, Yuba County. Want to try it once more?
Moore Avenue? Is that in Sutter County or Yuba County? What's the problem? Dow Landridge? What was it? This is your neighbors? Go ahead and walk through. Bringing this case to. There is one item that cannot diminish. Do it again. Ready? There is one item that continues to grow. Huh. Ready? There is one item that continues to grow and unlike notoriety cannot diminish. That is the cost of bringing this case to a conclusion. For tiny Sutter County, the I, be, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, you know, in jail and don't, my, my, my things all gone. My, fam all gone. my family, nobody would support them, see, there is no, no, no way to get the, the, the food and, and to leave, see, there is no house for them now. There is no, nobody to support my family. And, and when you think about the problems and the, and the trouble, uh, what do you think about it when you think of your family? Well, I, I've been very sorry, you know, everything, because... As I said again, I'm going to review uh, uh, costs, what what relief you might receive. Uh, Make right. Use that be at least sometimes yeah. if we need it. Yeah, go ahead. To date, what costs? has the county incurred, and what relief could you possibly expect? it out of the county would it be more expensive than trying it here that's been the big argument I feel it would be because uh, if we have to transport our prosecution staff to another location if we have to stand the sums of costs that may result from long jury trials I think it'll cost us more in another location than it would be here I really th would like to see the trial run here because I think Probably in the last analysis, Corona is going to get the best trial in this county. Beautiful. You got yourself a new tie. Uh, is there any chance a county like Sutter County, a small county, could get some sort of relief for costs of...
Go. When you think about The search for additional victims, at least as far as this area is concerned, is about over. Hold it. The search for additional victims is too late for acquittal, and, and uh, at the very worst, the gap now, if it, if it remained that way and hung eight to four for acquittal, uh, I would uh, have no problem in the second trial. Plus, and more importantly, I'm sure that the appellate court at least would give Juan bail. How about Juan's condition? Uh, just a moment. Uh, well, the fact that uh, he is incarcerated does contribute to the condition that he has. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I've won a lot of cases where I had less votes than this at this point. I, I, I would be hopeful that they reach a verdict. There's a counter argument that, the, or the jury can observe from themselves that that in this is not his true handwriting. That the guy was giving his handwriting under stress. I'm Roy Walkenharst, KCRA News in London. Tonight, a visit to a very special shop. Beverly. I believe that it is a budget in the same position that the budget was in in 1967 when the governor signed it, and it was some $800 million out of deficit. He said at the signing of that budget that there's a revenue measure raising $1 billion in taxes being authored by then Mr. the then Mr. Veneman in this house for the purpose of funding this measure, and I am signing it with that in mind. This budget is in that same category. It should be signed with the same spirit. It should be voted upon by this house with the same spirit. And as a caveat, Senator Collier, the man who probably played a greater role in drafting this document than any other, managed to convince his colleagues to the tune of 36 to 2 to vote for that budget. I will be personally offended and considered a racial slur if you do any less. I ask for an I vote. Mr. Brown, uh, in using hopefully not to uh, fiery words, is a, is a spender. It's his point of view that we should spend uh, uh, to meet the responsibilities of the state and uh, decide what the people ought to have and then charge them accordingly. And I would have to disagree with that. So in those terms, uh, this budget that Mr. Brown brings to us and asked us to vote for, um, I guess is, uh, about trying to make the comparison between the Goodyear blimp and a penny balloon.
Well, good afternoon. Good I have afternoon. this problem. I'm left-handed. What do you have to make my life simpler? Well, nearly everything's left-handed. Um, we have this address book that opens the other way around. Uh, and we have a key case which also opens the other way around. For my left-handed keys. The oh. correspondence. I, I write a lot of letters and think, oh, I, what is this? Well, there's a card, greetings cards. They just open the other way. For left-handed comments? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then we have grass hooks. For the yard, yes. Uh, how about around the home, uh, you know, kitchen upon? Oh, kitchen, where well, we have potato peelers and tin openers. Ah, yes, the kitchen. Which the poor is on the opposite side from usual. Ah, yes. Again, the correct side. And finally, I see some, what, what is this? Left-handed well, yes, ruler. This is the ruler okay. that reads the other way around so that you can measure from left to right. So we're finally going to get the right uh, scale on the world. Yes. That's very interesting. Well, thank you very much. We've been talking with uh, Mrs. Joyce Sands, a shopkeeper here at the left-handed store, which is dedicated to the proposition that all profits, anyhow, are created equal, even though some of them may be left-handed. Roy Walkenharst, KCRA News, in London. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. There they go. Iris Davis, Raylene Boyle, Best Familia. Davis, Boyle, and Best Familia. There they go. Milburn off fast with Morozov. Now moving up is Murray, but Rod Milburn and Godfrey Murray. Milburn, Murray, and Draper. Milburn, Draper, and Murray. For miles, Jan Johnson is the pole vaulter at 16.5. Frank Shorter into the lead again. Sveridov going out with him. Running away with the 10,000 meters with 200 meters to go. Shara Putinov at 28.30. Rashid Sharafutinov hitting the tape. Frank Shorter running second. Newhouse and Bond. Newhouse and Bond. Wilson in the third. And I might say at this time that uh, as sheriff of Sacramento County that uh, there's not enough money in the United States Treasury to buy my soul. And I have an admonishment for all gamblers and people who would indulge in illicit, activity, illicit, illicit vice activities that if they have the inclination to come in Sacramento to engage in gambling and other type vice activities, they better be prepared to spend a great lot of time in the Sacramento County Jail because I'm not going to acquiesce my responsibilities and I'm not going to be bought or sold like a piece of merchandise on a shelf.
Earlier today, you mentioned it. Dice que le pregunte que si la, los niños han visto a su papá o han hablado con él. No, no lo han visto, ni han hablado con él. Desde ese día no lo han visto. No, they have not seen him or talked to him since the day that he left. Do they know his current condition in the hospital? ¿Saben la condición que tiene Juan en el hospital? No. No. Do they ask about him? ¿Preguntan por él? Sí. Yes. How has it been? ¿Cómo ha estado? Juan. With Juan gone. Con, con uh, Juan que no está en la casa. Pues muy triste, pues no bien, no estoy bien, me hace falta. Very sad and things haven't been good. We miss him and we need him. How do you feel about your brother getting a new trial? Oh, I feel pretty good. Have you talked with him since he's uh, been imprisoned? Oh, yes. He still maintains he is innocent? Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. Naturally, because he is innocent. That's fine. Why do you think? Relax, we got time. Take a few minutes. Yeah. Mr. Would, would you pass that mic up before? Yeah. Sure. Dan? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Everybody ready now? Here we go. <laughs> you had a question. Well, ba basically, we've pled not guilty in the case. We're still operating under the old gag order uh, as amended. Uh, nobody is exactly sure what it says, so we're going to be very cautious in any comments we might want to wait might want to make. The case is indeed an extremely complicated one. We have some 17,000 volumes of testimony, in addition to all kinds of papers, pages of testimony, to uh, read over to get prepared for what we want to do. We're over some six weeks now to get prepared for the motions, the timing, the set a trial date, and move ahead. Will you make a motion for bail? 
uh, that's one of the matters that we will be considering during the interim time and Presently, take let me up just one say, way or another. Preliminarily, we're at the, the, the time now when we're figuring out what our strategy is. Um, Roy Vandenhoven will be working with myself and Terrence. Uh, we're going to sit down and we're going to figure out where we go from here. And it would be premature even to discuss a lot of the issues that I know everybody wants to know about. And it has been is the plea going to be not guilty only, not guilty period? We really haven't made any decisions as to our strategy and tactics. Uh, as I say, most of these matters uh, are coming up for the first time. We're going to sit down and work them through. Okay, and after the has six your weeks, client, so how long do you think the trial will last? Plea? Well, after the six weeks, we will then have to set a date for a trial. The trial last time took some four and a half months, about was three it? Three months, about three months. Three months of actual trial time. And it will obviously be an extended and a complicated complex to try out. Why did you decide to come into the case? That what it is? Uh, mainly that the defendant requested to uh, see me. Uh, Mr. Mendelson and I went down and talked to him. We got along well. I think it's a fascinating case. I've studied enough of it. Mr. Mendelson and I collaborated together at earlier stages of it. And I'm anxious to get into it and uh, see that Juan Corona gets the fair trial that he is entitled to. You said six weeks. What's the date of your next appearance? Have made in 30 for us to make the motions on whatever decisions we do make in the interim. It has been five years since that trial, and, and just how difficult will this be? No defense, no defense witnesses were called at that time. What, what is the magnitude of the challenge that you face now? Very great. Very great. Obviously, there is a serious question whether or not Juan Corona can, at this point, get a fair trial. Juan is reconstructing a case. So, and uh, it's when questions come up about bail, it's when questions come up about this, that, and the other thing. We're in a position now of reconstructing de novo. Everybody has a right to have, under the Due Process Clause, a, a fair trial. And subsumed within that notion is the idea that you are able Four things. 